According to data from YouTube, only a fraction of the people watching these videos are subscribed. So if you end up liking this video, subscribe. Fresh Bait by Corn Connick Leonard pushed his face firmly into the crease of his elbow as another scathing blast of frigid air blew through the valley. The snow piled up at his feet as he stumbled up the small incline, struggling to keep his balance as the biting cold permeated his winter jacket. Shivering, he turned, bearing his back to the icy downpour and staring across the barren fields of white before him. At the very crest of the blizzard, a single tent was cartwheeling across the snow, leaving a tiny trail of dents as each of its jagged ends hit the ground. Leonard prayed no one had been inside as he watched it disappear from sight, disintegrating into torn scraps of material. Tracing the tent's path, he spotted a patch of level ground, where a collection of scattered debris was strewn. Hastily, he skidded back down the incline and ran towards it, clutching his hood as it flapped mercilessly in the wind. Two ends of torn wire swayed back and forth at the edges of the area, where a tent had been nailed to the ground. Besides them was a piece of dark fabric, and then its pulse quickened as he saw it was the torn remains of a winter coat collar. Reluctantly, he kneeled and scooped it up with his palm, wiping the blurriness from his eyes with the back of his own gloved hand. Jeffries was scribbled on the frost-smeared label. Leonard rolled the name back and forth through his head as he stared at the familiar writing. Jake Jeffries, the one who had convinced him the oncoming blizzard was just a minor weather spike. The rotten no-good bastard that had talked him and his wife into joining him on this damn trip. He tossed the collar aside and with moderate difficulty pushed himself back into a standing position. The last tent of a half a dozen the trip had begun with flew into the air as he came near it its orange exterior fading into a solemn grey as it vanished into the haze. Leonard dropped to his knees once more as he rummaged through the snow, finding only empty flasks, plastic food packaging, and used waste bags. No flare gun, no emergency supplies, and no sign of any of the other hikers. No sign of... Rachel? Leonard desperately called out. Rachel, can you hear me? It was answered with another intense blast of cold to the face this time without the shield of his arm to nullify the effect. He coughed and hugged his chest, gritting his teeth to stop them from chattering together. Already he had lost the feeling in his toes. The cold was undoubtedly getting to him, and yet there was nothing he could do. Dozens of questions raced through his brain as he felt his final moments drawing. Where were all the others? Had they already succumbed to the conditions? Was he the last one left? The thought of his wife of so many years dying cold and alone was almost enough to force a tear from his wind-stamped face. And then, like a mirage, he saw it. An animal corpse in the snow. With the last of his energy, Leonard sprinted at the thing, who was both grateful and dumbfounded, grateful of whatever powers that be saw him fit to live another day and dumbfounded that such a creature could have made it so far into the oblivion. The nearest wildlife should have been miles away, and yet, here lay some sizable beast whose basic survival instinct must have somehow malfunctioned, leading it all the way to certain doom. From the way only its lower half was covered in snow, Leonard reckoned it must have perished fairly recently. As close as it was to the tattered remains of camp, he was sure he would have seen it before. And as for what it was, Leonard didn't have the slightest clue. He was sure it was just his frozen mind but as he shuffled to where he assumed its stomach would be, he noticed it didn't seem to match the characteristics of any animal he knew of. Its skin was dark and furry like a bear's, but its appendages were thin and elongated, ending in shattered, deformed hooves. Welts of flesh collected on its back, like purplish bruises and several long, thin scars ran down the length of its body. Perhaps it wasn't the cold that led to this thing's demise, and had thought to himself but rather some apex predator that had chased it until it could go no further. He shuddered at the thought of such a beast, roaming through the cold, teeth bared looking for its next victim. The ambiguity of the creature remained as Leonard took out a pocket knife and slit open its coarse belly. Warm, slimy innards spilled out, resembling no kind of anatomy he'd seen before. There was no stomach, 
intestines, liver, spleen, everything just looked like one big pile of rotten pinkish mush, like melted ice cream. He stuck to Leonard's clothes as he shoveled it onto the snow, distracting him from the cold if only to violate his senses in an equally unpleasant manner. Gore had never much bothered him before, but now he felt sick to his stomach. Before long, there was a big enough hole for him to crawl into. It was most likely going to be the foulest, most repugnant thing he had ever done, but it was still more preferable than succumbing to hypothermia. Leonard stood up and gazed out at the valley one last time, reaffirming its emptiness before taking a deep breath and climbing into the carcass. Jagged ends of bones pressed into the surface of his coat as he made himself as comfortable as possible, tucking his legs into the fetal position. He reached back to the flap of skin he had used as an entrance point and folded it shut, bidding farewell to the whistling wind. The smell was even worse than he had expected, but the difference in temperature was instantly noticeable. How long he would have to remain inside the corpse he had no idea. He dreaded the thought of sleeping within it, cringing at the idea of rot and decay seeping its way into his body as he tossed and turned in slumber. A little bit of time passed, and had kept his ears sharply tuned to the sound of the storm, which was showing no signs of diminishing. The thought of a warm shower with Rachel helped him keep his composure, even as he repositioned himself for the fourth or fifth time. Without warning, a revolting churn erupted from behind his head, followed by a sharp rippling sound like tape peeling from a wall. Goosebumps trickled down his back as he turned to see what had caused the noise. The thin trickle of light coming from outside had ceased, Leonard reached out to reopen the flap, only to find it had sealed itself shut. He pulled at the inside wall relentlessly, assuring himself they had merely misplaced where he had made the incision. But no, there was no mark there. Plain as day, the scar from which he had separated the tissue remained perfectly reformed. Instantly, the fleshy walls of his meat prison seemed to be closing in on him, the heat growing infinitely more intense. He once again unsheathed his pocket knife, only for it to slide between his slippery gloves and disappear between one of the creature's organic crevices. Leonard screamed, writhing and squirming as his body sank into the carcass's watery fluids. A soaked tendril oozed out from the newly formed opening beside his neck, filling his mouth and reaching all the way into the depths of his throat. Several more tendrils wrapped around his arms and legs and rolled him over to face the opposite side of the creature, where a gaping maw stretched open and beckoned him inside with its lips. Even as he clawed his hands into the creature's flesh and strained himself against its push, Leonard found himself sliding closer into the maw with each passing second. Hot sweat poured from his brow like a waterfall, vomit rising in his throat only to be forced back down into his stomach. Pushed only inches away, he was thrust inside the opening the tendrils releasing their grip and the maw closing behind him, plunging him into pitch blackness. Ripping his gloves off, Leonard clawed incessantly at the flesh around him, only managing to scrape off tiny slices of meat with his fingernails. Small strings of a hard, wiry substance grabbed a hold of his head, pinning it to the side and burrowing into his skull. Blood spurting down his neck, Leonard felt his body go limp in an instant as the cord unsqueezed around his brain darkness intruding on the edges of his vision. The sound of static filled his ears before everything went silent. His senses switched off in a mere instant. Horrid, indescribable screams burst into Leonard's ears as he slammed back into consciousness. Leonard? He heard one of the voices shout, a little louder than the rest. Leonard, are you there? A piercing agony stuck its claws into his brain, as he felt it brush against the brains of many others, electrical impulses burning and carving their way through his mind like streaks of fire. His eyes were glued open, and before him lay the cold, desolate valley, snow still ravaging the ground, the storm just as intense as ever. A shattered, deformed hoof lay limp in the corner of his vision, and it took him a few seconds to realize the eyes he was staring through didn't belong to him. We tried to warn you, Leonard. Another voice spoke. We did try to warn you. He attempted moving his body, but knew deep down he didn't have one anymore. There was nothing but constant noise and the frozen, unmoving visage of the piling snow. Picking them out individually would be a near-impossible task, yet Leonard was sure he could hear dozens of voices, 
some shouting, some whispering, some simply weeping, all fighting to be heard over each other. Their collective attention was diverted by the appearance of a figure in the distance, wandering aimlessly through the storm. The noise grew to an unbearable level, everyone screaming at the person to run, to get away, to seek shelter elsewhere, even as they got closer and closer towards the body. Leonard could only watch as Rachel spotted the carcass and ran toward it, a hopeful smile on her face. 